Brian Manchi here with Basis Technologies. I am sitting down with the great Aaron Levzow at Museum of Ice Cream. Thank you so much for joining us today. Of course. Yeah, Thank so you. you're newish to this role. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like everybody loves ice cream. Um, I think a lot of people like museums. I like museums. So you put those together. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> uh, but for people that aren't familiar with the brand, uh, tell us what is the Museum of Ice Cream? Absolutely. So um, we're part of Figure Eight, the parent company. And Museum of Ice Cream is one of our portfolio uh, companies that we'll have. Museum of Ice Cream has five locations currently. Uh, New York, Chicago, Austin, Singapore, and Shanghai with more coming. And we're very excited because it's not your traditional museum, right? It is really a place to come and play like a child. Um, you can bring kids to play with your kids there, or you can just come and be free and really get in touch with your inner child. And our whole mission is to unite and inspire through imagination and connection. We want people to connect. There are a lot of things that pop up that are about taking photos. And do we love that people take photos with us? Absolutely. But it's really about putting your phone down and looking at each other and playing together, right? Whether you're swinging on a swing together or going down a slide or every one of our museums ends with a giant sprinkle pool and jumping into a pile of sprinkles. And then on top of it, you eat unlimited ice cream. And so in most of our locations, there's about 14 installations, 12 to 14, and at least five to seven of them have a different sweet treat in there in each room. And so you get to try things you might've never tried before, or you might get some of your all time favorites like chocolate chip cookie dough or cookies and cream and I mean there's nothing like getting in touch with your kid like behavior as well as eating ice cream you can't not have fun I love that that's amazing what a what a great just experience and I love the idea of finding those alternatives to just be more present and more mm -hmm. fun and more play that maybe technology doesn't have to play a central role in yeah. all of our lives especially for an experience like that but we're in marketing <laughs> right? So technology does play a big role. Yeah. Uh, so how have you utilized technology uh, to help build the brand, to drive traffic, drive folks to these great, wonderful experiences? Yeah. So I'm relatively new in my role, which I'm very excited about. And so this year is a year of foundational um, footwork, right? Getting the right processes and uh, systems in place. So as of yesterday, we launched SMS marketing. Um, we did not have a text club before or any the inside scoop and uh, now you can be it. part of it and uh, we actually launched it here at this event oh, so very cool. that's one of them we have a lot of other things to put in place the great thing is all of our tickets are sold above store so we're able to track all the way through on who's buying those tickets right versus a little bit different than like restaurants where you're looking at foot traffic and they don't necessarily make all their purchases above store this is similar to like hospitality and hotels that's amazing yeah. I love that so uh, you said you're new um, but there are challenges, right, that I'm sure you're facing, probably uncovered some, some new ones, which with challenges, there's always great opportunity. Is there anything, the SMS launch, that sounds fantastic and mm -hmm. definitely a big, uh, you know, uh, arrow in your arsenal there of what you're uh, building. <laughs> um, what are some of the other challenges maybe that the, the, the organization has faced even before yeah. you that you're looking to work through or mm -hmm. any other things that you've been able to solve already? Well, <clears throat> I think when you go from startup to growth mode, you're always going to face challenges, right? Any company, whether um, some of the companies I used to work for, same thing would happen, right? You start to grow and you grow fast and there's going to be things that you have to prioritize and go time and resources. And where does that time get spent and where is it best spent? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what I do when I take on a new role is we grid things out and we go, what's low level of effort? What's high level of effort? What's low return? What's high return? And the areas that are like, high level of effort, low return, we're probably gonna throw those out the window, right? Those are the easy ones to throw out the window. The ones that are low effort, high return, let's do those all day. And then somewhere in the middle is the rest of it, right? And so really prioritizing and being okay with saying no to things, I think has been really pivotal uh, coming into this role is going, where do we need to focus our time and energy? Because could we be everything to everyone? Absolutely, but it's not realistic. And then also partnerships and who we partner with and what brands we partner with has been really important as to how we go about those two. So um, challenging, I think, is prioritization. And I think most CMOs would probably tell you that when they join an organization, like, all right, let's figure out where the priorities live. And then making sure the whole team's aligned on it and where we're going, right? We all have to be in the same boat and the boat has to be rowing the same way. And if one person's not doing their part, it can slow the whole boat down, right? So um, I, that's a very big way of saying 
time, resources, prioritization. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. That it, it makes a lot of sense. And it's interesting you talk about that analysis that you led of you know what is uh, um, what's going to take more time. What are you able to do? I imagine you look often at okay, here's the team that I've got in place and what we're able to effectively do. Mm -hmm. um, as you look at staffing up, as you look at training certain folks. Um, and also partnering with agencies and technology providers. Yeah. What does that look like? I mean, there's been this big trend of in-housing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that necessarily makes sense, but are there specific capabilities? Are you rethinking how you work with agencies and those different types of partners? Yeah, so it's interesting because when you asked that question, it made me immediately think about a friend of mine who went from being always on the vendor side or the agency side, and he went client side. And I asked him what he learned. And he said, what I learned is that I thought I was not one of a million calling on you. He goes, I didn't realize how many times, like my inbox is full of salespeople right now. And I said, well, what is that? What did that help you realize? And he goes, that everybody thinks they're going to change the world selling me what they have. And I have to lay out a plan and see how they fit into that plan. And I was like, that's interesting. And just the very, very different perspective that brings and so for me, when I lay out a plan and how we work with agencies and how we work with partners, it's about what's most cost effective mm -hmm. and what's going to drive the needle, right? And as much as like, I like running my own media, I came out of media, right? Like, I think it's fun to like run my own digital ads, but is that the best use of my time every single day? Probably not. <laughs> so yeah. figuring out where my time is best spent, where my team's time is best spent, and then where partners work with us collaboratively. Um, and then remembering that when people call on me, that they're one of probably 700 people that I heard from that day that all <laughs> think that they have the one thing that's going to change my life and drive more revenue. And I don't know how many times you see the email that says like, uh, I can get you 16 times or 60 times more. <laughs> and you're like, you don't even know what I do. Like you've never even been to the museum of ice cream. But what it does is it flips the script and it makes me go, okay, what do I need? And how do I go about finding it? And when the right person reaches out, then I know, okay, let's have that conversation. Yeah, yeah. So if we n narrow in and we talk about the different media efforts that are out there from the, the paid, the own, the earn, we maybe talk specifically about the, the paid side. How are you utilizing paid media to drive awareness, right? Mm -hmm. To drive more traffic, drive a better understanding about the Museum of Ice Cream brand. Yeah, so before I got there, um, minimal paid advertisement um, or one-off paid advertisement. Uh, now we're putting together a whole full strategy that's gonna be uh, closer to an always-on strategy. And we should be always on. I mean, we're literally always open, right? Yeah. Um, and being able to target not just people who live in the areas where our museums are, but tourists. So again, thinking about hotels, hospitality, the same idea, right? Mm -hmm. When people are coming to the city and making their plans, we wanna be in front of them. And we should be in front of them, right? Like. You stay in a hotel, you go to New York City, you're gonna to go to Rockefeller Center, and guess where else you should go? Museum of Ice Cream, right? You're gonna go see a Broadway show and Museum of Ice Cream. Like that should make sense. And so we're using paid media to strategize about specifically digital, when those people are showing propensity to come to the city, and then when they're actually getting there and making sure we're targeting them appropriately with the appropriate ad. Um, we have a high average ticket so that helps with like CPM and like how we okay. our return on ad spend looks, um, which is very different than in my past life tacos. The average ticket was a little lower, <laughs> right? So um, that definitely helps with our digital targeting and being able to really go after the right customers. So that that's that's amazing to think about. I think very helpful for for us at Basis. Uh, we can have some good conversations with you, but um, just fascinating to look at. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting technological advances. And mm -hmm. I think uh, across the marketing and advertising industry, um, what's, what's making you optimistic? What are you excited about? Is it AI? Is it utilizing that amazing first party data that you all are collecting and seeing ways to activate? Is there something else? What, what is that that's really, when you wake up, you're like, I love what I do because this is coming and this is happening. I think because everything's always changing, that's what I love the most is the always changing. I've always loved that. Um, AI is fascinating to me. I don't, like we all have been on chat GPT and we're all like putting in different prompts and seeing what it'll tell us. And like, we've all seen the minted Ryan Reynolds commercial where he's like, I had chat GPT write my- Did he really write it? I don't know, but yeah. it was funny. Yeah. Like it yeah. was so adorable. <laughs> and I mean, don't we all love yeah. Ryan Reynolds, yeah. right? But <clears throat> with that said, like 
do I know that it's really going to take over? I still think there's going to be people behind it. Um, but I find it fascinating. And I think that it's always evolving and ever changing. I also am realistic that while I am not American Express, right? I'm not some of these brands that have huge budgets to go out and build their own AI personalized engine, right? But what I'm going to do is learn and take the pieces I can and be resourceful about it. And I think there's a lot more people that are in the same boat I am with limited resources than there are brands that can go out and build it custom. So I think the more we can learn and pull it down and go, all right, we can take this piece and this piece and kind of like, you know, get our carabiners and like jumper cables and tie it together, we're going to get somewhere. But if I say tomorrow we're going to have everything written by AI and, and done by AI, I don't think realistically we will. AI won't replace ice cream, right? It, won't, it definitely can't replace yeah. ice cream. Uh, one last question for you. If you had a magic wand or let's say a magic ice cream scoop and you could change one thing about the industry... What would you change, Aaron? <sighs> the amount of the amount of people that you run up that are just fake. I would like more real conversations. I would like more people to say, I don't know. I don't know the answer. And ask and mind share. Sometimes when you sit down with salespeople, marketers, whoever there's a facade you have to break through. Hmm. And we all want to know the answers, but we all don't know the answers. I don't know the answers. I think I might know some stuff, but if you know some stuff and I know some stuff, what if we mind shared all the time? We'd be so much better together than sitting down and going, well, I think this, right? And that I would just like to see people really break down and just have a real, hey, I don't know what you're talking about. Tell me what that word means. Or not feel like you have to like closet Google things later, <laughs> right? Um, and the more we can do that, and I think different events I go to, you see that happen a little more. Um, I think that'll help us as marketers, as the industry get better together. I love that. Very real, very, very honest. Very real, yeah. I love that. So thank you, Aaron. I really appreciate you sitting down with me today and sharing your of wonderful course. insights. Always a pleasure to see you. So thank, thank you. you.